Hello everybody, it's time for exercise 60, Mozart's trills, how to study the trills. But first I have to enter a little bit in the stylic, in the question of style. Um, how to explain it in a Baroque music we see a consonant note and with a trill and we know that the higher note has to be the one that we show because it's a dissonant note that is not written but we have to play it more than the written note and then relax it to the written note which is a consonant. This is a Baroque trick in order to write consonants but play dissonance because in earlier times it was forbidden to use dissonance. Then it was just, a, let's say, the, the pol musical police would, would eliminate works that were with dissonance. Then came the time that people wanted some dissonance and the harmony got more complex and more complex and in the middle of the most complex harmonies of the Conste Fugge, Bach died. And so then came a new style that was influenced from Mannheim, but they got many influence also from Turkey, from Bulgaria, from Eastern Europe, folks music, that people wanted a new style, which was an orchestra making a crescendo during, during 20 bars, and the people were saying, wow, incredible, like a, like a typhoon that is going bigger and bigger and bigger, and uh, wonderful, just one chord, and the orchestra is 110 persons, was Mannheim. The cellos in this music have mainly the function of Rhythm, pom, 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 pom. the melody is beautiful melody in the first violins, the second half, the, the wagadugu of the harmony that is very simple, and, and uh, this is the orchestra of 110 persons with winds. So in that aspect, this is the biggest turn in music history, the biggest, let's say, uh, change. Huh? And so I'm a bit sad if I hear many times to play Mozart played in a Baroque style. And I think, yeah, why this change? How many pieces has Mozart written for cembalo? I know the KV uh, 9 to 15, yeah, the cembalo, cello and flute. Uh, maybe, but so he was, <laughs> he was eight or less years old. It is some but not much. And how many works before Mozart were written without cembalo? Maybe 3%, I don't, I'm not, I didn't count them, but some fantasias, some small thing, really out of the usual. No? Cembalo is there, is the harmony with the bass, and then the harmonic dissonance, so consonant. This is the Baroque. The nice melody with some rhythm, and very simple harmony, and influence from the cantabile, from Turkish music or from Bulgarian music, uh, big orchestra, dynamic, this is a classical music. And so, um, if we make, if we make some, uh, the, uh, all the trills from the higher note and all the trills from the accent on the higher note, like it would be a dissonance, many times we destroy Mozart's uh, style to, to, to write with scales and arpeggios. So, uh, if you look through the music, uh, I don't have to say the most famous... Uh, what is it other than a scale? And then... The big scale in this, with small scales. So, melody, scale, arpeggio is not wanted the dissonance. So, there's only one rule in Mozart is when you have a trill on a note and the note before the upbeat is the same note, it has to be from the upper note but without accent. It's a pianist, Mozart is a pianist, and it has to be the other finger that starts the trill. 
So. It's a. If you do. It would be the Baroque way to, to make the accent. It's absurd. Then we have an upbeat and the expressive note and the sleeping note. Now we have so we don't have the right note on the on the main on the second place. So Mozart trills are not baroque. If it's a melody. You have to play from a melodic note and not scale, arpeggio, tell me where is not the scale, everywhere, no. so you want to have two D's and no C, and then you have the B. So this is against Mozart. So it's just to explain how um, trills from above, yeah, but without accent, and except in a few situations, you have to look what sounds better. You play. This is Baroque. Huh? You want to make a dissonance, but actually it's not wanted. What is wanted is a scale. It goes on a scale. Huh? So, how to practice? Let's take the simple one. There needs to be an upbeat that is exactly a quaver. We have no free rhythm like in Baroque. We have the orchestra making quavers. It's no trill. It's too short. We are too, too early on the F sharp. Three times it could be right. Four times it's too long. We are too late. So, three times. Let's come down from the idea that the finger has to do as many as possible and stay somewhere in between notes. It makes no sense. So, we have to do it three times. So. In the head comes the rhythm and no more physical move movement. It comes the sound, the G, three times. So we bring it to the tongue. I go now slower because I have to introduce it to myself and also to you. It's three Gs, the one G up it, then three Gs like triplets and then legato F sharp. The, the tongue is very rhythmic. The fingers can be it, but it's more difficult. You see when on television the news are translated into the people that show it with their hands, or the ones that cannot hear, it's very complicated. It's really a lot of work. But the fingers and the hand can get message from the tongue. So, many times you repeat that the finger gets a feeling for beating three times the G. So, I have here, ta da da now I have here, ta da da but it's not the tongue doing it, it's the finger. So, it must be a rhythm, it must be a tempo, and it must be a mathematic thing. Then the finger is very easy. The first one is down. And I tell you physically, I take the tongue and I put it in the finger. So it's what I try to do. I could do it in the feet, but they're too slow. But the finger can do it. The hand. can do it, the finger can do it. It's a physical thing, it's a rhythmic thing, it's a mathematics thing. And the main note is the rhythm one. 
Now, it gets to the once with with a turn. We have the same thing. We have triplets and dwarves. So, so we go slower to explain it. So the finger has to beat three times, like the tongue beats three times. Then the third one is legato to the F sharp. And you have to be, the, the turn has to be in on 10. So to be able to study it, we have three plus two. Then in the, in the playing, it will get quintuplets. No? So, this is the truth in the first movement. If you see melody, follow the melody, main, main note trills. If you see the same note before the trill, you have to start with the other finger. The pianist would start with the other finger first, but the accent is down. Mathematize mathemata how many times? One is no trill, two is too, too, too short, three is good, four Four is too long, so there's no choice. Three. Where is the accent? The first one. Now, in the third movement, we have trills that are on semi quavers. It's another story. And not. So, what did I do wrong? I played a trill and I wanted still to play the note that was supposed to be the note of the trill. So I actually have five notes instead of four. So here, there's only one way to do it well. It's with three notes. It's, it's scale. What is it else than a scale? So why should I make an E after the E? And after E comes a D. It's just triplets with the accent on the first of the three. Because if I play, it sounds like I haven't played before the time. It's, it's, this is more easy than the first movement because it's just one solution. And you can just, the only thing is to play slowly and to fix the triplet on the semi quaver. simple, you know? just to hold the finger back from something physic and to educate it to something rhythmic, something mathematic. And then if it goes slow, you can do it also fast, it's no problem. The problem is to, to have clearness. So good luck with that. Bye bye. This was exercise number 60, the trills of Mozart. Now it's time to stop. Bye bye.